Welcome to the first of this short series of videos uh, about the Eclipse a Book Build product from Mecom. This is an introductory video which gives you an overview of what the Book Build product does so that you can get an idea about what the application does. We're going to look at the purpose and the publication structures available. In other words, what you can actually, how you can organize the book, book you're producing. Uh, the source files you require, the extra files that are necessary, and the actual process itself for creating a book build project. As you are probably aware, there's various different specifications which say how one should put books together. Um, and book build can actually be used probably to suit most of them because it's very flexible in what you can do. And of course, don't forget, there is uh, a 7S1000D structure, which you can find in the specification. We're going to look at the structures which are available now. And now books um, can be divided into major chunks. And in the error application here, we can define those chunks as uh, volumes or sections. Uh, they are basically the same thing. It's just a different way of naming them. So by default, then, but consecutively, but in some specifications where volumes or sections, um, the particular numbers of those have a specific function, um, it is possible to miss them out, uh, those that aren't applicable. Um, and you can define each volume or section to have a number for which it starts. And from that point on, the numbers are consecutive. To demonstrate what we've just been talking about, We've got two graphics here which show the same thing, but with different uh, words. So you could have uh, only one type uh, can be present in a publication of type. So you can decide whether you want to go for volumes or sections. And as we've said already, you can miss specific functions, specific numbers, uh, if necessary. The data modules in each section or volumes are called chapters, and they will be called that automatically, no matter what you do. Now we can introduce here you to the idea of having data modules which can be combined into a single chapter. Um, so this gives you a lot more flexibility if you like. Um, and we call those multi-DM chapters. So we've dealt with volumes uh, and sections and we mentioned um, that they contain chapters. And that chapters are where the actual information data is contained, and they're the data modules which you have created as part of the S1000D project. Now, the basic basic chapters in these in this breakdown consist of single data modules. However, Book Build does allow you to combine several data modules into a single chapter, and we call those multi-DM chapters. There are some limitations regarding the types of data modules that can be combined. And we'll be dealing with that later on. Here we can see the chapters um, in a publication. Now you can have chapters on their own without volumes and sections, so let's get that bit sorted out. So you can actually nest chapters to give them decimalized numbering. This breakdown uh, idea is exactly the same as in a publication module, S1000 e publication module. So chapters can be either single or data modules or multiple data modules and as you can see we've got the, the notion about the chapterization on one project that we were involved in uh, we had something like eight or nine different levels of decimalization of chapters now the basic file uh, which contains the data that we use in in, in the book is the, of course the data module but the order in which you have them in the book depends entirely on how you want to arrange the book. For example, um, you might have a book that's got a hardware breakdown. So each chapter would be um, a piece of hardware. So if we use the bike pack, for example, um, we can look at uh, the actual frame of a, of a bicycle. And in there would be the description of how it's made, fault diagnosis, maintenance parts and that sort of thing and then we would have another chapter which would contain uh, other another part like the wheels for example that's something like that so we have a hardware breakdown conversely we could have a breakdown which is entirely on information so we would have a first a chapter which describes all the various parts of the bicycle um, and then the next chapter would contain all the fault diagnosis for example 
associated with the bicycle. And then another one would be the maintenance of the bicycle. So it's entirely up to you how you have the breakdown, unless there is a specification determining the order in which things should be done. Now, in addition to the data modules, which contain the actual data that we're going to work with, Book Build also requires some unpopulated descriptive data modules so that some of the automatically generated information can be, a, can be attached to that file and incorporated into the book. So things like the table of contents, uh, various preliminary pages like the list of effective pages, list of highlights and index abbreviation, they're all automatically generated. Uh, the front cover that can you can actually use uh, that can be created by our application or if you wish you can actually use the front cover data module um, you also need a PM entry table of contents so that in fact you get the chapterization working properly those data modules are going to be populated automatically during the building of the book so you just you don't require to have them you can give them names that will suit you file names that will suit you so let's uh, to see the principle in which um, we actually create a book build file. So the first thing you have to do is to get the book build file template uh, and create a book build file itself in the usual way. So the book build file at the center there, um, we add the data modules to it. And we also add, if you like, these ancillary files. Clearly the data modules are the ones which contain the data. And the ancillary file is the bits uh, which we've been talking about. It gives you the table of contents and that sort of thing. So having got the files that we need um, inserted into the configuration file, we then need to carry out a process which is called initialization. So we initialize it. And what that does is to go through the book build uh, file itself and extract all the associated data module codes, um, issue numbers, and data module titles from each individual data module. And it stores those inside the book build file itself. At this point, we build the book. Now, what happens in effect is that the build process opens each data module in turn. And extracts the information and stores it in a frame maker file. In this way, of course, uh, the contents of the data modules aren't touched in any way. However, what you do do is you build up a body uh, of um, information in frame maker files. And where there's a multi data module chapter, then the individual um, frame maker files are combined into a single frame maker file to make up that actual chapter itself. And it starts at the beginning, obviously, with the tape with the front cover and then ends up at the end with whatever is the latest section is. Having built the book, we're now in a position to print it. Now, you can either print it to a printer um, to create a paper copy immediately. Um, clearly, if there's A3 illustrations, then you need to have a printer that can cope with that. Or you can create a PDF file which you can either uh, use for printing later on, or in fact you can use it for on-screen viewing, because one of the features about Book Build is that it will actually convert all of the cross-references into hypertext links. The exception to that is that it can't currently handle hotspots. The uh, PDF file system can't handle hotspots at the moment. Inevitably, uh, you'll get to a point where there is a necessity for um, carrying out some up issuing work on the book and the uh, as part of the book building process um, it's the book pro book build file actually has contained in it all the necessary information to enable it to handle the differences between two issues of each data module um, this is prior to issue four at issue four they removed the ability removed the elements which enabled us to do that so when you issue it, it what it does is it actually creates a second copy of all that issue information so that you can then do comparison later on so having completed the issue stage one is now able to continue with working on the book build file modifying if necessary the 
data modules, um, inserting new data modules, restructuring, or whatever you wish to do. This is the end of this short video, which gives you, uh, I hope you will agree, an overall idea about what BookBuild does, how it does it for you, how you can work with it. There's some more short videos which show you various stages and various uh, methods that you need or can use to work with the application.